guys are certainly intrigued to hear what he has to say. Let's start with where we started in the conversation with him about Matt Corral. What, what, what did you think about kind of Luke's thoughts on Matt Corral since the season ended and what the Saints might be thinking about him? Well, he's visiting this week, which I think is important to note here. Agreed. There is some level of interest if the Saints are bringing him in to talk to him one-on-one. Yeah. I mean, pre-combine, and I think I said this on the show, you know, when the Saints were at 18, I got to, I saw so many mock drafts of Corral going at 18 to the Saints that I just assumed, you know, I just started, okay, that's what they're going to do. That's what these guys are hearing, and, and that's what the Saints are going to do. And, I, you know, I was for it. I think that, you know, he could provide a, a good uh, – healthy competition to Winston and could possibly have won that job. Now that it seems the Saints, I feel like the Saints want to commit to Winston. I feel like they want to. They just can't bring themselves to quite pull the trigger. My thought process is if Corral's there in the second round, and I don't think he'll be there that late, but if he is, then then we can talk. But I would use these two picks to bolster what you have on the roster right now and, and, and maybe a wide receiver maybe an offensive lineman, or, or maybe, you know, you try to, you know, shore up a, an already good defense. So, But I, are, I, I just don't think Corral's going to be a Saint when it's all over. So, so you think the move was because they wanted two first-round picks, but not so much of, well, you had 18, but now you've got 16 and 19. You were convinced that Corral was the guy at 18, but now at 16 or 19, that doesn't make any sense. Well, I'm, I'm not sure I follow it, there. It's 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 a combination of the fact that Corral has has dropped for some reason, and I don't know what that reason is, but it's he's dropped on everybody's board. So I don't think he's gonna I don't think he's gonna go in the sixteen to twenty five range. So I would say that you know you, unless you're just set on him, taking him there, unless the Saints just are absolutely enamored with him, I just don't see him going at, at, at to either one of those picks. Orky. It gives you a chance. I mean, that that's what scares me with this when some people suggested they're going to package these picks and move up. That scares me. Because when you look Are you at the – moving up to get Kenny Pickett? Yeah, something like, like that. Terrible that idea. that Ooh. terrifies me because – I mean, does, I, 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 I'm sorry for derailing your thought. Does that feel like a Mitchell Trubisky, Daniel Jones reach – Yes. Oh, no doubt, Big especially time. when you've got you've got serious needs on the offensive side of the ball. You need an offensive tackle. Armstead's in Miami now. Not that he was able to stay healthy later in his time, but when he was available, he was one of the best in the league. Yeah. And he's gone. You need an offensive tackle, and you need a wide receiver. You need those more than you need Kenny Pickett. And you've got a chance with 16 and 19 to get both. That's why you make this move now, right? Is because it's a deep tackle class. It's a deep wide receiver class. You can get two immediate impact players that you know you can get this year, whereas next year maybe they've looked ahead and they don't really like the group of tackles or receivers that might be coming out next year. That's what I hoped was going on here because using these two picks to move up to get Kenny Pickett solves nothing about this football team, nothing at all. It still gives you desperate need, and that will be your third quarterback on roster. And because you trade up to get him, you'll feel like you're you're forced to put him in. And is he a difference maker? I don't think so, but you know what you've got in Jameis. Will it win you a Super Bowl? Maybe not. Probably not. But you know you desperately need an offensive tackle, and you desperately need wide receiver. Because those two positions right now on your team are bad. You need to fix them now. Or Matt Corral, you may even need those spots more than you need them right now. Jameis, who has seen what there is to see in the NFL. But let's, if they are going to pick a quarterback, please don't trade up for him. Like if Corral's there at 19 and they picked a tackle at 16, fine. Even if Kenny Pickett's there at 19, he won't be. But if he is and you picked him there, fine. You didn't sacrifice anything to go get a guy that you're not sure is going to help you. But do not take these two opportunities and turn them into Kenny Pickett, which solves nothing about your football team. Totally agree. Totally agree with what you're saying, 100%. Like I said, me personally at this point, I would would just replenish the roster. I would get a receiver. Surely one of Olave, Williams, somebody will be there, you would think. 
and uh, and then you know, so it feels like that's sixteen, and then nineteen is you know best available. It, you know it, it, that the, the, was it Pennington, the kid from Northern Iowa, possibly as, as a tackle, could be a possibility there. Or yeah. do you, like I said, do you go defense at that point? Or you know, here's the thing: maybe somebody really likes a quarterback there at nineteen. Oh God! And uh, sorry. And, and they want to trade. They want to trade up, and then you've got something to work with there. I don't I, possibly as, as, a, as a chip. So th- there's a lot of options for the Saints here. The, the, I will say this: we, we've talked about the draft, and it, it is weak for quarterbacks. And I agree f- with that. There's not a true bona fide no chance you're going to miss quarterback in here. But it's deep at other positions. There's a lot of good offensive linemen, a lot of good receivers. Defensively, there's a lot of talent in this draft. So there's 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 a lot to work with in this 16 to 19 range. Yeah, you you can you can absolutely make your football team better. Yeah, hundred percent, a lot better because you feel really good about what you have defensively. Now, for the most part, safety. If you can get Matthew on board, then you feel really good about safety. Despite losing a couple, uh, Jenkins retiring, and then uh, Williams signing with Baltimore. You feel really good at linebackers. Right, let's do it this way. If you're in Mickey Loomis's shoes, do you feel better about going offensive tackle at 16, Matt Corral at 19, or some combination of offensive tackle at 16, wide receiver at 19? Tackle, wide receiver. Tackle, wide receiver. And, I, again, I think unless somehow Cross slides down to 16, I'm going wide receiver, and then I'll worry about tackle or whatever at 19, because I want to get the, the best choice of the wide receivers. And, and if like if Olave is still there, then that's the, that's where I'm going. It's definitely deep in both spots. I, I just I, I like Matt Corral. I, I like him a lot. Obviously, we we got to cover him. He's a special player. I think he'll sure. be good in the NFL. But that's good projection. Kid. You know, and some guy on the text line said Jameis is going to lose the quarterback competition to a bag of rocks. No, he's not. Why people watched him play last year and saw bad? I, I'm mind blown by it. They were five and two. He was fourteen to three touchdown to interceptions. Was second in the league in QBR or something like that when he got hurt. Like nothing about Jameis Winston in 2021 was. He played well. He played well. So yeah, you know you the got, Saints were five and two when he got yes, hurt. You know you've got capable NFL quarterback already on board, and he's cheap. So, yeah. I, I, and again, I like Matt Corral. I would love to see him in a Saints uniform. That would be fun for me. I would enjoy that. I don't think that would be smart drafting. Unless you can get him at 19. If he's there at 19, pick him. Go for it. Because you've only got Jameis on two years. And I think the wide receiver room, well, no, although I mean, they need was, one, but, but is better on than... Yeah, I feel like you just talked out of both sides of your mouth because I, w- I was saying if you if you can go wide receiver or tackle at sixteen, I, I guess, and what then I'm... corral at nineteen. I, I, I guess what I was saying. I mean, if you when you say if you can get him, I thought you meant like early second round. Oh no! If 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 they pick him at nineteen, I, I will for whatever it's worth. I'll be fine. I would prefer them not to, but if they do it, I got you. Why not? That Let's go sense. all in. Sure. I just thought it was telling when we asked Luke a second ago when I, I was like, all right, these are the picks you traded out, swap, swap, swap. What's the end game? He's like, yeah, that's a good question. And we got to wait like I, yeah. two more weeks to know. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody really knows what they were doing. Yeah. Which I think all of us are in agreement that, like, this is probably – you you said you think the Saints want to commit long-term to Jameis, but they can't mm-hmm. quite pull the trigger – yeah. Is he not almost to the point in his career where he's not a guy? Like, he's not elite enough that this is you the want year, to right? marry him until he's 40? Well, he's, he was 5-2 he was and two last year and playing well. He's still if he had only stayed healthy, years old. I, I know, but if he had stayed healthy, I'd like to have seen what the results would have been. So this year, if he stays healthy, you'll sort of, you, you're going to sort of know. So this will be the year where they either, they either commit or they don't, I think. There's one other thing to discuss here, too, maybe in my opinion, but what if the Saints – Want to trade up? Want to package these trades to trade or these picks to trade up? But it's not for a quarterback. Maybe they want to make sure they get one of the three elite offensive tackles in this draft. They want to get Neal or you. I can't say it or or Cross. You know what if that's the NC what if, State guy? The NC State guy, exactly. Yeah, that's how you Okom- say his last name. Okamu. I, th- I can't. I, I, I'm not sure, and I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to pull a Quanzo Martin. Um, 
So what I mean, what if that's what's that's what if that's the game plan? Or maybe there's an elite. You even know how to that, pronounce it correctly and still do it wrong. I, I wouldn't I hate that. At this point, it's just it's just it's just fun. I wouldn't uh, hate that. Yeah, I mean, what if what if that's the idea? Like, look, we want to trade up, but it's not to get a quarterback. We want to, there's there's an elite player we want to get. Well, if you're going to trade up, though, it better be tackle. Because wide yeah, receiver, I mean, while you need one, with Thomas you, healthy and Callaway, it's not like you know they are absolutely putrid. To could, use your word, there. Could you trade up to maybe get Kayvon Thibodeau? Hmm. Do you, yeah. well, Cam. Do well, you Cam Jordan's getting him. up there. He you is. don't need him. That's an absolute luxury. But putting him on that defense, I mean, it's something. I'm fascinated by this. I, I even him visiting today, and maybe it's due diligence. You know, Mike Tomlin, in the thoroughness, if what I heard about the way he handled himself in Oxford around Corral's pro day is true, where he was, Richard, you may have have heard differently or whatever. I heard Mike Tomlin was like going around town. Hey, have you interacted with Matt Corral? I I was told that that he was, and I'm I'm not trying to take away from Richard, but I I had somebody who was there, and they said that he made a point to go and talk to non-football staff in the IPF, yeah, uh, talking to people who work at the cafeteria, people in academics, saying you deal with Matt Corral. Tell me what. Tell me about him. Trying to find out what he's like off the yeah. field. And so, what if you've got teams that host, especially quarterbacks, on visits to get intel on them for when they have to play against them? I mean, you're telling me that Mike Tomlin, for example, wouldn't take that step because I would. If I thought the Atlanta Falcons were about to draft a quarterback that I was going to play against twice a year, I want to talk to him unfiltered. I want him in my office. I want to know what makes you click everything about you because I thought them signing Dalton ended them their position in the quarterback draft. Because why would you sign Dalton? It's just a one-year deal, but still, why would you give him guaranteed money? And have Jameis getting guaranteed money to draft a quarterback? Are you really going to keep three quarterbacks on your game day roster? It's not what you usually do. How much do they pay in Dalton? Just three, but still. Uh, you cut him if you want to. But he counts to your cap. Yeah, but three million. Remember, they make magic happen with the cap yeah. all the time in New Orleans. I, I just I figured that ended uh, the court. I guess not. But I mean, if nothing else, let's pretend for a second that Atlanta does draft Matt Corral. Well, Dennis Allen and Pete Carmichael got to sit down with him for hours and learn everything about him. I find that interesting. Yeah, but doesn't every team in the NFL do that to a certain extent through the through the it combine? Feels, and, oh, sure. But I, I, I found that nugget about Mike Tomlin fascinating as well. I mean, I guess it doesn't surprise me. You're only successful at the highest level because you do things like that. But it just goes to show you how thorough the, the greatest ones are, right? I mean, would, would you have thought of that when you're going to watch a guy work out and see if he's healthy? Let me go around town and, hey, have you interacted with Matt Corral? Oh, you have. Tell me about him. What was your interaction with him, you uh, barista at Starbucks or whatever? That's thorough, man. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. I, I don't think I'm doing that for a tight end. I don't think I'm doing that for a, for a wide receiver or a defensive tackle. But, yeah, it makes a lot of sense at quarterback. You want to know everything you can. And and what have, what have we said before? What have I said? I think I said it one time last week. Maybe it was a couple of weeks ago. Teams are looking for a reason not to draft a player as much as they are looking for a reason to draft a player. Absolutely. 